Today I want to answer a question on the photoelectric effect, which is a question that might come up on nuclear physics. And the questions are generally really similar. They're easy to answer as long as you know what's going on. So we're going to talk about the photoelectric effect. You can also check out my video on it if you haven't already. Uh, but let's just get started. So the photoelectric effect introduces us to the concept of a photon. And it's, it's the effect in which you have like a piece of metal and then you put light onto it and then electrons come out um, and that's about it and from this alone you can deduce that light actually also has particle qualities and not only wave qualities so that's where we are introduced to the wave particle duality of light so let's talk about what is meant by a photon a photon is basically just a little packet of electromagnetic energy as you can see, the wave particle duality makes it very difficult for us to define a photon as like a wave. So a photon is kind of like a packet. It, it kind of behaves like a particle. That's what we mean by a photon. So this is the definition for that. So this is how you could define a photon. It's a quantum. Or a quantum means a certain specific amount of electric, electromagnetic energy, like a packet of electromagnetic energy. So now we go to a very important graph in terms of um, the photoelectric effect. And it's this graph right here. Um, this graph for the photoelectric effect shows us, basically it says electromagnetic radiation of a varying frequency f and constant intensity I is used to illuminate a metal surface. At certain frequencies, electrons are emitted from the surface of the metal. The variation with F of the kinetic energy Emax of the emitted electrons is shown in figure 7.1. So this is like a very typical situation in photoelectric effect that is basically made into a graph. You have a certain piece of metal, like I said, and you have light that is put onto it. And you're going to make this light have a certain intensity and the frequency of the light is going to be varied from 0 to 12 times 10 to the power of 14 hertz. So you're going to continuously increase the frequency of this light. And from a certain frequency onwards, you see that electrons start to get emitted. So that is the threshold frequency. So the certain frequency onwards, we have electrons that are emitted and that's the threshold frequency and then we see that the um, energy of the electrons the maximum energy of the electrons hike up as the frequency of the the photons also hike up so that is what is happening over here and so we know that the threshold frequency exists because of the fact that light is acting like particles in the photoelectric effect and this is the reason why the, the frequency matters because the individual energy of the photons matter one photon will collide with one electron and so the individual frequency matters and not the intensity the intensity is just how many photons are emitted per surface area That's why the intensity is not important over here. Only the frequency matters. The higher the frequency, the higher the energy of the individual photon, and therefore you can have a higher kinetic energy as the electron is flung out with more force. Um, and also, if you have a energy, a photon energy that is lower than the threshold frequency, the electrons are bound to the metal by electrostatic forces and if the photon energy is too low it cannot overcome this force do the work that is necessary to overcome the force and free the electron so that's why the threshold frequency exists all right so now let's get to some you know question answering instead of the summary let's state the name of this phenomenon and we all know that this is the photoelectric effect so here is like the golden question of this um, they ask us to describe three conclusions that can be drawn from this graph and the conclusion can can be qualitative or quantitative which means they want you to state the laws that are surrounding photoelectric effect as well as the specific numerical values that we can deduce about the type of electron the type of metal this is so when we talk about quantitative that's the numerical values the first thing that should come to your mind is the work the work function 
because that is just you can derive this straight off the graph and if you count the squares you will know that this is approximately uh, 5.4 times 10 to the power of 14 hertz so we know that the work function is equal to w equals hf um, this is an equation that you should memorize, by the way, because it's not given ahead in the formula sheet. Um, this comes from just the fact that the energy or the work that is required um, that goes into this electron is the work function HF plus the electro the kinetic energy of the emitted electron and the emitted electron has zero kinetic energy at this threshold frequency so this is gone so we just have to consider this so you need the Planck's constant and you just have to multiply it with our frequency over here and if we do that we get so that is the answer you just have to multiply the Planck's constant by the threshold frequency um, so we can put that over here the work function Okay, so that's the first conclusion that can be drawn. And then, then we can talk about the threshold frequency as well. So we can conclude that there is a certain threshold frequency which must be passed for electron emission. That was one of the first things that were noted about photoelectric emission is it depends on the frequency and not on the intensity. So this threshold frequency, you can also say the quantitative value, which is 5.4 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Lastly, we can talk about the fact that the, um, the gradient or the Emax, the kinetic energy of the electrons, actually depends on the frequency. It increases linearly with the frequency. So we can say that the increase in frequency correlates with an increase in the Emax linearly. A good keyword to watch out for here is the fact that it increases linearly and there is also the keywords of threshold frequency and obviously there is the work function which you should also put in the quantitative value so those are the three points that you can talk about you can also talk about the fact that the gradient of the line is the Planck constant um, if you wanted to but I think these are more easy to derive just by looking at the graph so this is why these are the three points that I've chosen and now let's get to the last part of this question. So over here they said that the experiment, the photoelectric effect, is repeated twice and each time we're going to be making one change. So they asked us to state with a reason how the graph obtained would compare when a different metal is used but keeping the intensity of the radiation the same. So if the different metal is used, that means that the electrostatic force between the atoms of that metal and the electrons of that metal are going to be different, which means that maybe you require more energy to free the electron or less energy to free the electron because the atomic structure has changed, which means that the threshold frequency has to be different. So we know that. And we know that the threshold frequency is basically the intercept, the x axis intercept um, over here. So it's when the the line will intercept the x-axis. That's exactly the threshold frequency. So we have to talk about it in terms of like the terminology that describes graphs to generalize. So we can talk about the fact that there's going to be a different intercept. However, even though there is a different intercept, there is still going to be the same gradient. Remember that the gradient is always the you know Planck constant. It's not going to change. So you can include that in there as well. Um, on a general scale, you should always strive to answer two things when it comes to describing a graph, which is the intercept and the gradient, especially if it's a linear graph, um, which honestly, like frankly, at an A-level physics level, we mostly would only be able to describe like linear graphs like the one we have here with the photoelectric effect. And the second question says that the same metal is used but with an electromagnetic radiation of intensity 2i. So we have concluded that the intensity basically does nothing over here 
um, it might change how many electrons are emitted per second, but that is not something that is shown in this graph. So this graph does not depend on the intensity at all. So we can say that there is no change. And we should probably give a reason for this. And the reason is that the photons have the same energy because the energy of the photons, and this is particle theory, the energy of the photons depends on the frequency. It doesn't depend on the intensity. So over here I've written, according to particle theory, the energy of the photons depends on the frequency of the photons. Hence, the photons have the same energy. And that would be basically our final answer. So that's how I would answer this question on photoelectric emission. It's a very simple question because it's about just one phenomenon and it's quite easy to understand. We all The most important thing is you have to correlate this to particle theory, not wave theory. And it's something that helped us prove that wave also behaves as a particle. It was proved by Einstein. So I hope this was helpful for your studying in A-level physics and for further videos like this do check out the rest of my channel. Thank you for watching.